Hello everybody. I'm going to do a video here on some various lathe uh, tools, tool holders and tool posts uh, just to give you guys an idea you know for the, the novices out there who may want a little bit of more information on this stuff. Uh, I'm going to go through this. Uh, I may shoot uh, some videos uh, of grinding lathe tools, uh, knurling, how to knurl perfectly actually every time uh, you know and things of that nature you know I am a hobbyist you know and I do this uh, in my leisure time and I enjoy it uh, you know so it's taken a long time to read here read there get good information get bad information and compile my own so if you guys are interested in some of those types of videos you know uh, drop some comments and let me know so I can maybe focus them a little bit but I'm just going to continue on at my leisure at that uh, anyway, so I want to get into some of these tool holders. I have two of three styles that I'm aware of. Uh, I have the lantern style tool post here, the rocker style. Uh, here are two sizes. The one in my left hand is actually for a small six inch atlas lathe. And the one in my right hand actually fits my nine inch south bend lathe. And this type of a tool post here holds these types of holders. Uh, here is a uh, left-handed one here, a right-handed one, and a straight turning. Uh, so depending on what you're doing is the one you would uh, select to use. So in this case, you know, this would be mounted in the actual tool post. Uh, mount your cutter bit out. And the rocker part is, you know, you can rock this back and forth to set your tool height. And then you would lock it down with this on the top. So that's just an example of one of these uh, and of course this would hold smaller ones uh, like like this particular tool right here it would work for this one uh, so that is really in a nutshell the lantern style uh, I don't use these all that much I've switched over to a quick change tool post and we'll get to that in a moment so I'm just going to set these aside you know and not to mention you know we do have you know left right and straight holders here in that style this right here would be a threading tool holder and it is ground perfectly at the 60 degree point and kind of the beauty of this one right here I don't I don't really use these but I have them anyway uh, the way that this blade is made here the only thing you have to do to sharpen this is just flat grind the top of it and you can rotate this thing around till it's a nub and you have all this area here of that to cut threads uh, this one here would be a parting tool holder I don't have a parting tool in it right now but it would hold one and that's how you would part your part your stock off of the lathe and here are a couple examples of knurling tools for the rocker style a smaller one and a large one this one actually is new old stock it has never even been chucked up and uh, you know I don't like these because they exert a lot of lateral pressure on the the part you're trying to knurl and the spindle uh, so I don't use these types of knurling tools uh, I'm going to show another knurling a couple of knurling tools here in a moment and show my preference just to give you guys some information now what I like using is the quick change tool post and I actually have two right here and you can see the size difference on these uh, the one in my right hand is actually from a2zcnc.com uh, this would actually fit maybe a small import type lathe I had this uh, I use this on a six inch atlas lathe great little product it is aluminum uh, hard anodized but for the size of the lathe it seems to work great and the one in my left hand is the same principle this is both of these actually are kind of a loris knockoffs uh, this is the phase two uh, you know it comes out of china this is the piston version i would have preferred to have purchased the wedge style i'm not going to get into that uh, but i didn't i was saving a few bucks when i bought it uh, but I like this one or this style because you have all of these 
tool holders here. Here's an example of one. Uh, one this big bolt, you can rotate it once you get put it on the lathe and lock it down. And then the lever will actually release the piston, drop on your tool, lock it in. You want to change your tool, maybe you have something that you want to put in this direction, lock it in, and you're good to go. I like these as well because once you grind and make a tool, let's say it's a facing tool, uh, this uh, lock bolt and this thumb wheel here allows you to set the height of the tool on a perfect center line. So let's just say for example this was a facing tool that needs to be dead center to get a good face without a nub on the end of it. Set it up, lock it in, there you go. Take it off, put it back on, you're back to facing again. And it doesn't matter if you're grinding your lathe tools and they change in height, you can compensate from that right here. You cannot do that with a turret style tool post. You need to use shims to shim it up or if it's too tall you need to grind the bit down. And I, I've never used one of those. I don't have one so I can't show it in this example. Uh, but in terms of these tool holders for this, uh, this would be a part off tool. It's got the part off blade in it. Part your work. Of course I just showed you this one here. Uh, here's one with a bit actually loaded in it. Some of them actually have a little V groove on the bottom here uh, and that is so you could actually lock in maybe a boring bar or something that was round and lock it down into that little V groove. Very handy. Or you could use a holder similar to this one uh, which is actually a straight board holder which you could put a boring bar in here and lock it down with these screws and there you go. And here's another type of a holder which actually is kind of a dual function. This is actually a knurling tool. It has the knurls on the end of it. Uh, but it also has a, a section cut out where you can actually mount a bit. And I actually have a really tall, uh, sorry, a really small uh, boarding type bar in here that I ground from a just a square blank and I was using that to cut a it's actually square cut to cut a uh, a groove inside of a board to put a snap ring so since I don't use these holders uh, if I can get a position in there where I can use this thing to utilize it on the other side like this boring type of application I you know I actually get use out of the tool and you can see you know how how large just to kind of scale them up here's two tool holders for the small tool post I showed you for the little A to Z that's just a standard tool holder which holds your bits and this one would actually be a little boring bar holder here and just to get a little bit of a scale you know in between these two sizes of lathes between six and nine uh, that's what you get you know this this 9 inch tool post, uh, the one for my 9 inch lathe, I think it fits actually up to a 12 inch. And then you get into, you know, larger tool blocks and tool holders for larger lathes. I mean, to the point where you, you know, you got to use both hands to load them up. So that's kind of the rundown on those. Uh, I did show the knurling tools. There's two styles. Uh, here's the third style of knurling tool. And this is the one I like, and I actually have it mounted in one of those tool holders. But this is a scissor type of a turning tool. So instead of exerting all your force laterally into your part, deflecting it, uh, you know, wear and tear, whatnot, uh, this one actually pinches on the top and bottom of your part. It scissors down onto it. So let me just exaggerate this. You know, for example, here, here's your, your part. You come down onto it, kind of center it up and your pressure is being exerted on the top and the bottom and there's really no extra pressure being put on the lathe. I really like this. It's real friendly on the lathe and it works well. And again, if you guys want to see how to make perfect knurls every time, let me know and I'll put out a video for that. And uh, speaking of boring bars, I've showed you the two boring holders. I, I don't have a boring bar out here to fit those but here's another style of a boring bar holder uh, which would actually fit in a lantern style tool post right here and here's the bar and I have three different T 
tips and they actually the tool bit when it goes in here it, these three different tips are for different angles uh, there's one that comes out straight which you would use for internal threading and then there's two other pitches uh, that you know are different degrees uh, to hold an actual high-speed steel bit in here So that's really the rundown on on the actual tooling itself uh, for work holding not work holding but for uh, tool bit holding um, You know here's an example of a uh, a High-speed steel bit, you know, which would be held in these types of holders or the other one and obviously this is too big but it would go in there like so and I don't think I have I do somewhere sitting next to me uh, well this one's a little big uh, well anyway this is not the right size bit for it but it'd be held in like so and locked down right here so again you know this is just a little information on different types of tool holding uh, tool bit holding for working on your lathe uh, the only one that I do not have here that is, you know, pretty common on the import type lathes is the turret block style. Uh, but if you do have one of those, especially on one of the small import, maybe the Harbor Freight uh, 7x10 or whatever they are, uh, look into getting one of these quick change tool posts and figure out how to retrofit it to your lathe because, I mean to tell you, you'll love it. You will absolutely love it and it is money well invested. So hope this gave you guys some information. Good luck and thanks for watching.